In part one of this movie, we take a look at basic transforms. Transforms are the three tools you need to move, rotate, or scale objects in a scene. You can access them from the main toolbar, but also from the quad menu when you right-click in a viewport. The keyboard shortcuts for move, rotate, and scale are W, E, and R respectively. Transforms are also selection tools in their own rights so you don't have to switch back and forth between Select Object and the three transform tools. When a transform like Move is enabled and you select an object, a transform gizmo appears. In the case of Move, the gizmo shows three axis handles representing X, Y, and Z directions with the colors red, green, and blue. To move the object in any one direction, place the cursor on the arrow until the line of its axis handle turns yellow. The arrowhead itself doesn't change color. And then when you click and drag, the object's motion is constrained to that direction. To move an object in two directions simultaneously, place the cursor on the square where two direction axes meet. Rotation is similar, but the gizmo is different, with a set of concentric circles. Again, the red, green, and blue colors reflect the X, Y, and Z directions. There is also a gray circle which lets you rotate the object on a plane parallel to the viewport. When you drag any one of these circles, it turns yellow and the rotation is constrained to that axis. When the cursor is inside the sphere of rings, you can rotate the object freely on all three axes simultaneously. If you wish, you can turn on Angle Snap from the main toolbar to restrict the rotation to 5 degree increments. You can right click Angle Snap to access the Options tab and change the angle to the degree you want, such as 45 degrees. You can also use the options in the Snap tab for precision control to specify which elements you want to snap to such as grid lines, points, object pivots, edges, faces, and so on. The keyboard shortcut for angle snap is A. Scale has a few more options. In its simplest form, placing the cursor in the center of the gizmo lets you make the object bigger or smaller without deforming it. However, dragging a single axis handle deforms the object in one direction and the aspect ratio is altered. You can also scale an object on two axes, but not on the third. For example, you can alter the fuel drum's radius without altering its height. Finally, you can also use this last scale option in the flyout to squash and stretch the object, which is very popular for creating a cartoon effect. Basically, this option lets you scale the object along a given axis, in this case the z-axis and deform the object along the other axes to retain the object's volume. Sometimes you need to enter specific values when you transform objects. You can type in values at the bottom of the screen or by right-clicking the appropriate transform button, such as the move tool in this case. The selected object at this time is at world coordinates negative 2, 0, 0. This scene displays meters as a unit of measurement, and you might see other types of units, such as inches or generic units if you are using a different scene. To relocate this object to the origin of the world, you can set its X value to zero. Notice how the X value at the bottom of the screen also changed to zero. Sometimes though, you may need a relative offset. This other fuel drum, for example, has an imperfect decimal driven X value. Suppose you want to push this object an extra 2 meters to the right from where it is right now. Then you would use the offset, world x value in the right column here. Once you type in 2 and press enter, the value goes back to 0, readying itself for another entry. And the absolute, world x value changes to the sum of the original value, plus the offset you just added. If you wish to add a relative offset at the bottom of the screen, this option toggles between absolute and offset coordinates, much like you have in the transform type-in dialog. Let's dismiss the dialog for now. 
Ultimately, you may need to align objects together in some form or another. First, select the object you wish to relocate, such as this fuel drum. Click the Align tool, and then select the target object to which you want to align the fuel drum, such as this crate here. You can then preview and adjust the alignment using a series of options. Let's make sure in this case that we align the pivot points first, and then align the two objects in X, in Y, and in Z. Once you're done, click Apply to continue the alignment work, or press OK to confirm the changes and exit the dialog.